a self-navigating smart cane. This is really, really cool assistive technology. It's developed by our genius friends over at Stanford University, led by Professor Michael Kokendurfer. Okay. Um, he's an associate professor of aeronautics there. And basically what they've done is, I mean, let's think about some people who are visually impaired. They use their, like, the stereotypical white cane to help guide them. It's right. an essential tool for them to be able to navigate their way around the world. Um, the thing that this team from Stanford's looking at is what's all this technology that we've developed for self-driving cars, right? LIDAR, GPS, magnetometers, accelerometers, gyrometers, all these things that we use to help our cars guide themselves. Can we borrow any of this technology for these visually impaired folks who are basically, I mean, they have a video associated with this article where they said the most revolutionary development in the realm of these guiding canes for visually impaired folks is the fact that some of them collapse. So we've got all this, you know, <laughs> super intense technology to help us drive our cars. Can right. we borrow any of this to help our friends who are visually impaired to help guide them around? And their main key performance indicator here, the metric that they were looking at is the walking speed of the person. So if you think about it, if you're trying to get from point A to point B and you've got to use a cane to navigate because you can't see, it's going to slow you down a lot. So we want to be able to enable these people to travel at the speed they want, to get the places that they want to go without accidents. And so the, the main indicator that they're measuring right now for that performance is how fast this person can travel from point A to point B. Okay, so here's the question I have. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the white canes are used right now to avoid obst obstacles, right? Like yeah. they don't guide you to the right direction. It's just no. as, as you have a mental map of where you want to go, you avoid obstacles. Do they want to bring additional functionality while making this obstacle avoidance thing better? Or is it just improving obstacle avoidance with whatever they want to do? Let's jump straight into it because I don't answer your question, but the short okay. answer is yes. So they there are smart canes like you're talking about so far that have been focused on not just helping you avoid obstacles, but also using GPS technology to say like you tell your cane say hey i want to go to the coffee shop down the street and not only will it help you avoid obstacles it will also help guide you there okay the problem with those smart canes is they weighed over 50 pounds <laughs> and they cost over six thousand dollars okay so not, not really feasible. a solution for the masses right seeing as you have to be strong enough to carry this 50 pound cane and want to do that and then also pay six thousand dollars for the privilege of doing that it i would probably stick with the one pound simple white cane if you ask me that right. can actually collapse that that's the yeah. one advancement that has been useful and you'd be getting rid of that as well so yeah so let's talk about this stanford cane um it borrows a lot of that technology that we were talking about mm -hmm. from self-driving cars so they have lidar sensors on there which basically use light to look for a, uh, obstacles in front of it it also has a camera to do the same to get some context around where it's located okay in addition they have GPS that helps locate the cane, and they also use that to help with navigation. They also okay. include a bunch of other sensors like magnetometers, accelerometers, and gyroscopes to help understand how the person is traveling, where they're located, and also the orientation of the cane. And, okay, so... You know, relative to the obstacles around them. I'm trying to piece this together. Uh, the, the LiDAR, for listeners that don't know, it's a sensing system that shoots out like beams of light and it tends to rotate at, at a specific axis and it maps, it creates a map of things that are around you. So that, that's a system that I guess they're using for avoidance. The camera kind of plays into the same thing. The mm -hmm. GPS is very interesting because it could give you X, Y, and Z. So if, if you're like in a mall, it wouldn't just be able to tell you that, congratulations, you arrived at the mall. It could be like, oh, you're on the second floor and you wanna to go to Starbucks or whatever. Yeah. Okay, so this thing is like loaded. It, it has all the goodies that you would typically find in a modern autonomous vehicle autonomous robot or anything like that okay yeah and so the awesome thing here is remember uh our predecessor smart canes cost around six thousand dollars right i i think this team from stanford i'm gonna go look at this article real quick i think it was less than yeah four hundred dollars for all this stuff most of the components are off the shelf okay so the, and the weight remember 50 pounds for that other one this one mm -hmm. weighs around three pounds how 
I'm not <laughs> sure. They what I think the main thing here is they really cut it down to the essential technology. It sounds like a lot of sensors, but they're probably using smaller, less expensive modules that are available off the shelf instead of trying to develop everything from the ground up. And again, instead of focusing on having uh, you know, a hundred percent navigational accuracy or a hundred percent obstacle avoidance. What they're focusing on is just helping this person to travel faster. So they, they cut it down to what's essential. They use these off the, off the shelf components that aren't ridiculously expensive. And they have a solution that I think will be more useful to everyone else. And making it off the shelf and affor- affordable just means it's more accessible, which yeah. is like a pretty big thing for people that yeah. are visually impaired is that you make these things as easy to acquire as possible. Exactly. And so let's, we talked about the sensor packages that they put on there, all this technology they've borrowed from autonomous vehicles. Right. Let's talk about the sensor or sorry, the software that powers these sensors as well as the hardware that helps them navigate. That's the brain. We got to get into it. Yeah. The software that uses this technology they call SLAM, which is simultaneous localization and mapping. This is also borrowed from robotics. We were actually looking into it for my senior design, uh, the, the corrosion detection robot. But it yeah. was just way too much work, so we scrapped it. Well, I mean, to, to boil down SLAM to what it means in a few sentences, basically what it does is it makes a map around you, and then, you know, we've talked about digital twins in the past. This almost creates a digital twin of Wii U, where you're located, within mm-hmm. that map that it generated, and then uses feedback from the sensors to help tell you where you need to go within that map for navigation. Right. So that's mainly what they're using for obstacle avoidance. I imagine they're layering that on top of GPS navigation to help someone get from point A to point B. The question that still stuck out to me here is how are they guiding you? You know, are they giving you a sound in your ears telling you where to go? Are they telling you turn left or stop? Or right. is there a piece of hardware that's also uh, giving you some feedback and giving you a nudge perhaps to help navigate you? And so I looked at their video, I checked out this article. They have an Omni wheel at the tip of this cane. Ferbode, you're pretty familiar no with Omni Wheels. I've seen you building a robot with Omni Wheels. Can you yeah. explain to everyone what like what they are and how they work? Yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, traditional wheels, if, if you want to change directions, you have to point them towards where you want to go. But That's the like Omni Wheel... The steering wheel. Exactly. The Omni Wheel has rollers on it instead of, like, threads, meaning that depending on uh, how you're rotating it and, I guess, where, where its orientation is, you can move to whatever direction you want to go. It's you know, omnidirectional as, yeah. as, as it, the name puts. So this cane is pretty cool. It's got an omni wheel on the, on the end of it. If you've ever used an omni wheel in a robotics project, you, this is probably very similar to what you've seen. It's an off the shelf component that I think I've purchased and used before. Um, it's got this wheel on the tip that has a motor on it that will turn it to the left or the right to give someone a nudge to help avoid an obstacle or to give them directions. So if I tell you, I want to go to this coffee, coffee shop, uh, it could, you know, kind of nudge me to the left if I need to turn left or nudge me to the right to avoid an obstacle. Dude, that's and cool. So in addition to having a motor that turns this wheel to the left and the right, it also has rollers on it that allows it to move forward and backward translation without the wheel having to turn completely. So super cool use of an Omni wheel. Most of the times in robotics, when I've seen people use them, they're not quite necessary. They're just interesting to have there. Um, but this actually seems like a very useful application of the Omni wheel technology. That, that is so cool. So it, it, it's guiding people and it's avoiding obstacles. Now, how fast, how much faster is it than if, if you were just like using a white cane? Because you said that's the main uh, criteria that they're trying to hit, right? Making yeah, this so process faster. They started first with people in their group, you know, that have sight wearing a blindfold and they compared them using a white cane, you know, low tech solution to their high tech solution. They're able to walk 33% faster using the smart cane um, as compared to using, you know, the normal white cane. But the problem is those people who have sight and are wearing a blindfold aren't very experienced at using the cane to navigate, I imagine. So they like, all right, let's go back to the drawing board. What the real, you know, measuring stick for us here is, is someone who is visually impaired and has been using one of these canes for a while because those are the end users that we want to use this technology. Exactly. So let's let them, you know, measure their walking speed with their normal cane and then measure their walking speed again using our smart cane. And even still for those people who, you know, are very experienced at navigating without their sight, it still increased their walking speed by about 20%. So imagine 
just you know overnight being able to get, walk everywhere you go out in public 20 percent faster that to me would be a life changer absolutely and uh i'm, I'm gonna plug this thing i heard about semi recently um Steve Jobs was talking to an Apple engineer about why it takes so long for the operating system to boot up on one of the earlier models. And he was like, we can like shave down 10 seconds, but who cares? He's like, well, think about everyone that uses a computer saving 10 seconds every single day. And over a short period of time, that's one human being's lifetime. Yeah. So now you think about all these visually impaired people, and now you're making something that's essential going from point A to point B that they do every single day probably. And you're saving 20% of their time every day. Multiply that across everyone's visually impaired. That's such a I mean, significant it, contribution you can make to the community. If if you could tell me that I would save 20% of my time while walking, I would take you up on that offer right away. And so these folks who are visually impaired, they've had, you know, not the greatest way of navigating compared to this technology that we've been developing for cars. So I really like the idea of borrowing some of this technology and Absolutely. giving it to these people in a way that's accessible. Their, their solution's open source. I know you love that for Bode. Absolutely love it, yes. Just the spirit of it is really, really encouraging to me. And one thing that I thought was really, really interesting is they've got all these processors on board to the cane right now. Remember, it's they said it only weighs three pounds. But right. they're hoping in the future to offboard the processing to actually happen on the smartphone so they can make the ah. cane even lighter even less expensive 